So with Angela being taken away to the room of death by Necromedia, and Paulo seemingly leading us into a dead end, it's up to us to figure out where we need to go next. And considering our inventory is pretty scant of key items, all we really have to go off of are these mysterious metals we've been collecting over the course of the game. And you might be wondering where we are supposed to use these metals, and it's an area that we have kind of gone by before. And that is exactly where we are going to be heading right now, though it is going to be a little bit of a journey. You might remember all the way back in the third video while we were exploring the Spirit's Castle the first time, there was an area up on the second floor here where we did have an option to go a little bit higher up, but I decided not to go up there. And there is kind of a key reason I decided not to go up here, you know, all the way back then. And that's because I felt like I think it would have been spoiling a little bit. Because inside this room we see it's almost a rogues gallery of antagonists in the game. I mean, we've already seen this lovely lady here quite a bit through our journey. And another familiar face we were introduced to last time is right here. It's Hypnos, Master of Terror. But this very large looming fellow here is someone entirely new to us. And if we take a quick look at his portrait, we'll see that he is described as what I'm assuming to be Thanatos, which I think is the Greek god of death. And adding even more to the mystery of these entities is the fact that the first portrait here is, well, entirely missing. Seems that somebody has gone out of their way to rip this picture out of its frame. But along with the pictures themselves, there are some adjacent indentions in the wall here where we could possibly put medals. And in fact, the very first portrait seems to already have a medal in place. If we take a quick look at it though, we'll find out that this is the Medal of Dreams. So I'm assuming whatever portrait was supposed to be there was maybe for some type of dream god. But to continue our progression, we just need to place the medals we found in the proper slots here. So for Hypnos, we want to place the Sleep Medal. And Necromedia may not be immediately, you know, easy to figure out, but by process of elimination, we can probably figure, you know, she's not Death, so she's probably Fate. For Thanatos, we want to use the Death Medal. And the game is actually nice enough for this particular puzzle that it won't let us put the wrong metal into the wrong slot. But with all that out of the way, it's now time we head into the final area of the game. That's right, on this very, very top floor, in the very center of the Spirit's Castle, we have run into what I can only assume to be the very inner sanctum of these death gods. With the gilded adornments on the wall and the very, very large jewels, they seem to be doing pretty well for themselves. And amongst all their opulence, we can also see they seem to have a very big uh, idea of themselves as they have mounted their faces up on the walls here. Yeah, each one of these masks is representative of each one of the four gods. And we can use that knowledge to our benefit here, because in this pretty simple room, we are given a door with one of the masks, along with, along with what appears to be a gem inside of it. And that mask is representative of whose room this is supposed to be. 
though, as with that portrait that was ripped away in the gallery at the start, this is the Dream God's room. And there isn't much to it. Just a couple representations of his face on the wall, and just more of a mystery as to who this Dream God is supposed to be. Still, that really isn't our concern for right now. We are still needing to be on the lookout for Angela and a possible Necromedia. But much like the order that the portraits came in in the gallery, so too are these rooms set up. And this right here is Hypnos' room. Though for some reason it is locked, and even more curious is the gem inside the door seems to be burnt out. I can only assume that is because at this point Hypnos is very, very dead. Next up in the line is going to be Necromedia. Yeah, we have a little bit of a roadblock to get past with the this lovely Minotaur here. Amazingly though, he is not anywhere as difficult as you might think. I mean, given the tight quarters, you'd think he would be fairly formidable. But for some reason or another, he just decides to hop around and allows easy access to shoot him in the back. And with that guard taken out, we can confront Necromedia and hopefully get back Angela. It appears that we will not be getting an audience with either of those people. Still though, maybe due to Necromedia's arrogance, she has left her soul stone just sitting wide out in the open. Being as this is going to be very useful to us in the near future, we are going to go ahead and pocket it. Now, you might recall, in the last video, in a rather goofy setup, Paulo did mention that he did believe that Angela was being taken by Necromedia to the Room of Death. And yeah, it might seem the most obvious course of action that the Room of Death is probably going to be the God of Death's Room, Thanatos. And much like with Necromedia's room, we do just had to make quick work of this Minotaur here. And hopefully we haven't wasted too much time and that Angela is still alright. It is a bit curious though, because it looks like the gem is burnt out on this door. Akira, your partner is safe. Paolo, are you alright? Yes, don't worry. It'd take more than that to do me in. What was that? That was Tanatos, Master of Death. He's the oldest of the spirits. An overlord of those I was pursuing. Paolo, why are you involved in this? They killed my wife a number of years ago. Your wife? So... Yes. There's nothing left for me now.
Makita, we'd better get out of here. Yes. Let's go. I hope you destroy them, Paolo. And sadly, without much fanfare, the seemingly overlord of the spirits and the god of death has been taken out by the, uh, the quick work of Paolo. He is two for two so far on taking out these gods, and I mean, that would fill me with a sense of hope. It's just that at this point, you would kind of assume the game should be over, and yet the credits have not rolled. And that's because, as you can imagine, there is still one final hurdle to get over before we can call it a successful game over. Akira. What happened? I'm sorry, but I can't return home with you. Why not? You can't mean you're going to stay behind here. Akira? Paolo, what is it? Necromedia. You've impressed me, Paolo. I never imagined you'd be able to defeat both Kanatos and Hypnos. <laughs> and you're about to follow them, Necromedia. <laughs> How could such a puny little thing like you fight me? There's no way you can win! You're the one who should be worrying about that. You haven't got... Yes, I have. Oh! Paolo, are you alright? Leave this to me. Hold your tongue, human, and you may live a little longer. No. Why not get rid of you now? Akira, watch out. Necromedia is... With that, it is now time for our first and final encounter with Necromedia. Now, much like Hypnos, she is completely invulnerable to our shotgun. But as opposed to Hypnos, well, we do have to be careful, because that final blow there will kill us in one hit. So, what you need to do for this fight first off is to use that Soul Stone. That she does proceed to transform into a much more ghastly form. It's just we still cannot damage her at this point. You might notice her soul stone is now bobbing about the arena here. And if you thought that my troubles with bats were over, that is far from the truth. This soul stone, well, you can pretty much imagine it as a very fast moving, very hard to hit, and very. Annoying bat. Now, while it doesn't do damage to us directly, Necromedia, taking up quite a large portion of the arena, is going to be pretty much constantly pelting us with her red lightning here. And while she is shoving us about, hitting us repeatedly with the lightning, and saying about the same two or three lines over and over again, 
we have to somehow manage to hit this very small, constantly moving target with our continued horrible combat expertise. I mean, I can at least say that while we didn't have too much of a combat encounter with the other uh, death gods, we definitely have our work cut out for us in this particular fight. But with a little bit of perseverance and finally destroying her soul stone, Necromedia is now available to take some damage from us. Now, she is a pretty large target, so it's pretty difficult to miss her. The one thing to keep in mind is that she does have some invincibility frames, and secondly, as opposed to pretty much any other enemy we've fought in the game so far, Necromedia has a metric shit ton of health. She takes about 14 shots, and if you've wasted too many fighting the Minotaurs or doing anything else, well, you're kind of boned at this point. With a little bit of perseverance, we succeed, and that is the game. Akira, you did it! Yes, somehow. Paolo? Akira, did you get its soul stone? Yes. Good. My revenge is now complete. Let's get out of here. I told you, Akira. I cannot return home. Why not? You've had your revenge on the spirits now, haven't you? Yes. I have. But I... Akira! Come on, Akira! Let's go! But... When you get back, burn down the mansion to seal up the entrance to the castle. It's time to say farewell. We won't be meeting again. Paolo! Why couldn't he... Come on! Let's go home! Okay. And with that, we've managed to save all the kids, we've managed to save Angela, and more than likely we are going to burn down the mansion to seal up the portal to the Spirit's Realm. And you probably have a lot of questions, and sadly you're not going to get very many answers. That is the only ending to the game, and... Well, it's kind of revealed at the very, very end of this credit sequence, but... Apparently Paulo was that fourth god, I guess the, the god of death. Or the, uh, god of dreams. Uh, as to whether or not he was malevolent, or had some ulterior motives for trying to assist us in killing his brethren. Not really sure, it's just one of many, many unanswered questions that this game feels the need to pose. I can only assume that given more time, the story could have been more developed, we probably could have had some sweet-ass fights with Thanatos or Hypnos or Orpheus, I guess would be his, uh, his name as the, the god of dreams. Still, it is uh, it's an interesting look at a very, very rare PS1 horror title, and hopefully you all enjoyed the ride. 
And hopefully you will join me next time for whatever it is I decide to play. For now, I'll lead you with this jazzy ending. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.